Thanks, Steve. Good evening, everyone, to the beautiful city of Prague. Let's take an immediate check on the two teams, starting with Scotland. And Craig Brown is hugely limited in his team selection with 12 players out. And Matt Elliott's indiscretion on Saturday when he's red carded means there's a change in defence with Paul Ritchie of Hearts winning only his second cap. Ian Durant has passed a fitness test on a damaged calf to play in midfield. Well, six, six of the Czech side began the 1996 European Championship final against Germany at Wembley. Several have moved on to make their names outside this country. Poborski and Berger were quick to come to England. Pavel Cernicek is now number one goalkeeping choice at Sheffield Wednesday. And Vladimir Schmitzer will become a Liverpool player next month. Well, the Czech Republic will rely on a gang of four which rule the football team. Martin Hasek, a tough tackling midfield player, and Poborski, Berger, and Pavel Nedviev. A match official, as you can see here, Helmut Krug. And he'll get this match underway very shortly indeed. Joe, you fancy the Scots are going to do well here, don't you? Well, I think so. I think they've got to bounce back after the result and the performance they had at the weekend. But I think their approach, Gary, will be a little, <coughs> a little bit more cautious than it was when they played against the Czechs in Scotland. I think we've seen in that night that if you go behind the, against the Czechs and you start chasing the game, they'll catch you on the counter-attack. They're very dangerous, and I think Scotland will be very wary of that. Four years ago, when Scotland qualified for Euro 96, they did so by winning seven of their ten matches. This time around, they would need to win all the remaining games, including tonight in Prague, to register seven wins. It's 62 years since Scotland won an international fixture in Prague. Success today for Craig Brown's team would catapult them towards automatic qualification as the best place second team. A win for the Czechs, and many of these fans will be heading for Euro 2000 in 12 months' time. Both teams in their traditional strip. David Weir getting an early touch here, helping it back to Neil Sullivan. Scotland looking to put behind them the disappointment of Saturday in the Faroe Islands. They came back to a very rough press indeed. But this is a chance to make amends. And who knows, maybe the fairy tale for Craig Brown just might come true in this city of castles and dreaming spires. Throw in here to the Czech Republic. It will be launched in towards Loch Vence, a beam pole of a centre forward. Here he is. Niemetz, and cleared by Calderwood. Pebble Nedviet, it's a clever little ball in. Incidentally, Craig Brown told me yesterday that Colin Calderwood will man-mark Liverpool's Patrick Berger, and Paul Lambert will do a similar job on Lazio's Pavel Nedviet. That is... Scotland's game plan. Joe, do you think it will work? Well, you mentioned two players there, but I think if you look through the Czech team, they're one of two others that need to mention. You mentioned the line up there, the player that could possibly be going to Liverpool, Schmitzer. I think he is a player that uh, his goal record is there, but also, in general play, is always a danger. Convoy captains aside tonight, and plays a sweeper. Josef Hovenex, the coach of the Czech national team, former international central defender and captain of the Czech Republic. David Weir helping it back once again. And just as you predicted, Joe, on our way to the ground, Scotland being very cautious early on. Yes, I think so. I mean, it is in a way fix. Scotland, as we know, are desperate for a win. They need the points. But you can get that in different manners, and I think to go and chase the game tonight would be suicidal. It's a great ball in towards number nine, Kevin Gallagher, who has a shot on goal. Yes, I think he is one of the players that Scotland could utilise in their counter-attack. We have those in Gallagher. He has a shortage of games, but when he is, is fit, and hope he can show that fitness tonight, he is a player that has got the ability and also the pace to trouble the Czech defence. Boyd with a hoisting clearance. Gallagher almost underneath it. Lambert. David Weir. Patrick Berger of Liverpool just got in the way. And 
the Scotland team have a throw in, which David Weir will take. Weir slipping back into defence tonight. They play forward towards Gallagher, but repelled by the Czech Republic defence. The Tartan Army are here in force, about 5,000 estimated, cheering their side on as. Kaborski tries to pick out Nedbied, and a very cool piece of defending there by Lambert, mops up for the Scots. Boyd. That one headed clear by Hornyak. Gallagher away from Bergen. Davidson. One by Hasek. This is Michael Hornyak, Patrick Berger. Kaborski. Former Manchester United player, now with Benfica. There really is a feeling that when these players return home to Prague and pull on the red jersey of the national team, they play that extra 10% better than they do for their clubs. But this is Pavel Nedviev. Poborski, Lokvens and Schmitz away for the cross. Lokvens with that diving header. Poborski again. This is Berger. Lost by Johnston and picked up by the captain Yuri Niemetz. Berger. In towards Lock Vance. Pavel Nedviev. Trying to find an opening to have a shot on goal. He's a very tricky player. Arguably the most complete midfield player in European football. Poborski. Nedviev. Yes, I think, I think early doors, I think Paul Lambert realises he's in for a game tonight. He's had to make two runs to follow Ned Yed. One that they, they managed to get and once that Ned Yed got on the ball and started the checks on the move. He is without doubt a quality player, Barry, and uh, I'm glad to say that not only is Lambert in the middle of the party, but also Durant. I'm glad to see that he has passed the fitness test because I thought in the first half against the Furaz, I thought he was a very important player for Scotland. Dogs. Chased by Hashek. Pick out Durant. David Weir. Durant under pressure from Berger. I thought that it might have been a foul. Right here is Paul Ritchie, who's been drafted into the team after Matt Elliott's dismissal on Saturday in the Faroe Islands. Big game for Ritchie. Big game for Scotland. The streets around Prague uh, for the last two days have been choked with Scottish football fans entertaining their hosts. Once again, they really have been fantastic advert for the nation of Scotland. Sukhapade. And in Gallica. with a cross, it's cut out by Tom Boyd. Schmitz uh, trying to win the ball, Horniak has won it here for the Czech Republic. This is Poborski, Horniak, Berger. Chased by Calderwood, he left Calderwood in his wake there, that's a worrying sign for Scotland. Poborski. Lockvents is on the back post, and even the beanpole Lockvents wasn't able to get anywhere near Karol Poborski's cross. His only goal for the Czech Republic was the goal of Euro 96 against Portugal. That toe end lob in the quarterfinals. And I think on that goal alone, Manchester United snapped him up. Ian Durant, who's passed a fitness test on a damaged calf to play tonight. by Lock Vance. And I think Scotland have made a very promising start. Early doors, I know, but they look confident and they look happy on the ball. And I think that should be a corner kick. Yes, the German official, Helmut Krug, points towards a corner flag. And Scotland have good, done a good job so far silencing this 20,000 crowd. This was a sellout four weeks ago. The black market has been doing a roaring trade in tickets for this game. Johnston, who scored on Saturday against the Faroe Islands. 
there he is, Sunderland winger. David Weir, it was a good touch. Durant, Durant sliding in, and Scotland have a free kick. Albert Krug spotted something on the edge of the penalty area, and Yuri Nemitz, the captain of the Czech Republic, doesn't look too impressed, does he? Plenty forward here for Scotland. Can they just nick an early goal? The whistle has gone, that will be retaken. Number two, David Weir, prominently forward. Scotland will try again. David Weir's on the back post. Paul Ritchie's in there, number five. Up towards Ritchie! Oh, it was a free header. What a chance for Paul Ritchie, the former Scottish schoolboy captain. Well, it was not only Paul Ritchie had the opportunity there, but he was the first of a pair of Scotland players who went, and it was a marvellous ball played in by Durant. And Paul will look at that, and I think he'll realise that is a missed opportunity. There he is, first to the ball, in front of, I think it was Billy Dodds. And that's the chance it's gone. It was a super free kick. And that has to go down as a golden opportunity spurned by Craig Brown's team. Niemetz. Yuri Niemetz, the... Uh, player from Schalke in Germany. I was just going to say there, Gary, that, that free kick came from the result of Alan Johnson getting on the ball, and really as the, the game has started, it's an area of the field we want Alan to be playing, because I think when he came on in the game in Scotland, he certainly had the better of the fullback, and tonight we want him in that area. We are cleared by Sukapare, as far as Tom Boyd. Where is there first? Gallagher. Davidson has made a run, he was hauled back by Poborski. The referee's allowed the advantage, it's a good ball in by Davidson. And Scotland have made a very bright start indeed. I was uh, talking yesterday with Tom Boyd and David Weir, and both of them said if the Czech Republic allow us to play football a bit, we've got a chance. The Faroe Islands, by comparison, just packed out midfield in defence, and Scotland found it hard to break them down. This is Hasek now for the Czech Republic. Schmitzer. Berger. Poborski. Disappointing ball by Carol Poborski. Uh, picked up by Tom Boyd, making his 38th consecutive appearance for Scotland tonight. Craig Brown, who had his fair share of critics when he returned home from Torshavn in the Faroe Islands at the weekend. The Tartan Army out in force. They've been singing and dancing for the last couple of days. Lambert. Lambert again. Chased by Hasek. by Nemex. Craig Brown discussed yesterday putting pressure on this number seven here for the Czech Republic by playing Alan Johnston very far forward down that right wing and it's working so far. Six years Callum Davids. Pavel Nedviet. Poborski. Schmitzer. Richie tries to get back. Ricochets off Ritchie. Poborski. Schmitzer. Log fence. Berger. Log fence. Ned Vied. Good defending by Scotland. Yemets. Ned Vied is onside. Danger here for Scotland. Great tackle by David Weir. Cernicek, the Sheffield Wednesday goalkeeper. Durant. That's a free kick. Well, that's the third foul, maybe by a different person. 
Uh, Rev got that time, but I think Alan Johnston is the way out for Scotland. He is the player. He found himself in, in the game against the Faroes more in a central position, but tonight, tonight we see him more on the right hand side. But Kyle Susan not happy, does he? No, I don't think so, because I think he can sense danger there when Alan Johnston gets the ball. Where Dodds, Thomas Retke, almost losing him to Dodds there. I think it's important, Gary, that Scotland, who I will be defending for the majority of the game, do have an outlet. And I see obviously, with the two strikers, or Alan Johnson on the right-hand side. Here's Durant. In fact, it was Johnston who had the shot. This one played in towards Gallagher. Dodds! Oh, a save by Cernicek. And another great opportunity. It was a shot on target by Billy Dodds, who comes close to his fourth international goal. Well, it came about from the throw. I think there was a switch there with Alan Johnson. He got his cross in, and Billy Dodds, he got his shot in, but maybe not with the power that I think he would have wanted. Sukapare. Scotland have created two really good opportunities now. Here's that chance again. Good control here by Dodds, isn't it, Joe? Yes, he has. He's went by Revka there. Right foot shot. It's certainly check. He's made a good save, fumbled it a little bit. But as I said, the first time, I think Billy would have liked to get a little bit more pressure and pace on the ball. Gallica spins away from Horniak. And a free kick. The referee is a strict disciplinarian, Helmut Krug. He is known for brandishing yellow cards, and he's sent off... Radoslav Latil in the European Championship for the final in 96. It meant he missed the uh, final and indeed booked four of the Czech Republic players. Davidson with a cross. Away by Repka. And this well oiled Czech Republic team are misfiring at the moment. One or two Spanos in the works. And those Spanos are wearing blue jerseys. I think Scotland, of course, as I said, they would start. But the way they have started, in that manner, they've still created two chances and have played some good football at the same time. Nemets, Nedviev, in towards Lock Vance. It wasn't a great ball. Remember, Scotland started very brightly indeed in the match at Celtic Park against the Czech Republic and now there's major problems because Pavel Nedved's picked up a heavy knock here but Nedved and Berger are free kick specialists and when I came to the stadium last night the Czech Republic were practicing these free kicks from exactly this position he takes them over on the far side this is Berger's territory really Berger and Nedved in conversation. Berger told to leave the ball. Nedved wants the shot. There's his view of it. It's Berger! What a clever free kick. He spun off the defensive wall. And it's a good job that the Scots defence were well and truly aware of the danger there that Patrick Berger was threatening Berger tigerishly challenging for the ball Johnston, who's had a bright start to this international. He's only got three weeks off before he retreat, uh, reports back, rather, for pre-season training with Sunderland. Paul Ritchie. Davidson. Gallagher. Lambert. Scotland playing some neat and tidy football here against a team unbeaten in their 
European Championship qualifiers so far, and Schmitz has won it here for the Czech Republic. Lockfence is in. Lockfence. Oh, a fine save by Sullivan. Dreadful error by Scotland, and their goalkeeper let them know. Well, that's an early warning, Gary. His defenders. How dangerous that was. Yes, I think that is certainly a warning. I think it was Lambert was caught on the ball, and he wasn't more or less the last man. And they got off lightly there. So they made a good save. I think if you're going to play your football, you play in the middle of the park, not at the back. Sukaparek. Lambert. Headers by Thomas Retka. Berger. Yenets. Sukaparek is a sweeper for the Czech Republic. Oh, that was a dangerous kick by Hasek. Stern lecture from the German official helmet crew. I've seen him dish out yellow cards for less than that in his international career as an official. Obviously, the Czech beers agreeing with him. I think if that really to come a bit later on in the match. I'm sure that uh, Hasek would have collected a yellow card. Davidson tries to flick the ball on, but Paborski got his head to the ball. Hence the throw into Scotland. Davidson. Dodds. Davidson won it back. Dodds helps it on. There's an opening here for Scotland. Johnston. And it's whipped off the end of his toe by Pavel Cernicek. Another good opening by Scotland. It was especially with Billy Dodds who persevered. And I think earlier on in the movement it was kicked. But he, con he continued, persevered, and he got his cross in. Allen's anticipated his marker. Got in front of him. And the ball's just run away. Cernicek. His head, the engine, and he's got there just before Allen. Good build up. Schmitzer. Away from where? Schmitzer now for the Czech Republic. Goal kick. Vladimir Schmitzer on his way to Anfield next season. Very close friend of Patrick Berger. In fact, it was Berger who persuaded Schmitzer to sign for Liverpool, and Schmitzer has thrown away the chance of playing in the Champions League next season after helping Lance to the French Championship. Block vents. Hasek. Nedviev. to uh, fill you in on the background of this game the full house tonight is because the Czech fans here expect the Czech Republic to be one of the first teams to qualify for Euro 2000 by the end of tonight's game it all depends how events unfold in the Faroe Islands where Bosnia are playing but if Bosnia fail to win and the Czech Republic win tonight they're on their way Durant Davidson Another hefty challenge by Horniak. That's a nasty tackle, Gary. That deserves a brief. That's a tackle from behind. And Horniak, that's his second offence, really, in the space of about 20 seconds. He really should be booked for that. Well, we saw some very lenient refereeing on Saturday, and then all of a sudden a red card was brandished. The referee, as you say, Joe, has uh, let a couple of the checks off the hook. Durant with a free kick. Headed clear by Retka. Schmitzer. You watching on Merseyside? That's what you're going to get next season. Berger. Sukapare. Retka. And Retka was being fouled. Kevin Gallagher, who was racing back to aid his defence. I, 
Link Kerr and then his partner Billy Dodds are looking for a little bit more protection than they've been given so far by the referee. Referee in. Sukhaparik. Calderwood missed his challenge. Lambert. And they were let off there as Paul Lambert mocked up after his colleagues. Kaborski to take the threat. of Davidson, Fournier, Berger, the support here from Ashe, Schmitzer, Good possession football here by the Czechs, Nedviev, trying to help it through to Lockvents, he hasn't scored that many international goals, but my goodness, it, he's a target man and a half, and David Weir has his hands full, doesn't he know it? spotted something on this near side foul by Davidson free kick to the Czech Republic Berger with a free kick kill to the back post and away by board to Kapanek Berger Nedviev Schmitzer. Oh, he's pulled it back. Sullivan hasn't got there. Berger. And nobody could get a decisive touch there for the Czechs. First time they really have carved Scotland open. And that delicate flick from the outside of his left boot by Patrick Berger almost brought us the opening goal. Niemetz. Well, Berger did ever so well here, Joe, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, as you mentioned, Gary, it's the very first time that they've got through the Scotland defence. Berger here shows good footwork, just tries to toe poke across the front, but there's no one following up. Pognac. Berger. Hasek. All the way back to Sukaparek. Stadium almost deathly silent at the moment. And that will be music to Scotland's ears. Prior to the kickoff, the crowd here were very rowdy indeed. I think they were hoping to have had a goal by now to cheer. But the scoreline is blank. Nedbiev, Kowalski. The referee has not played the advantage. I think that was a poor refereeing decision. Well, I think it... I think you've got to be fair to the referee. The linesman did put up his flag, but he could have, a, he could have allowed advantage. Richie was the player who was just slightly late to the ball. There was no what? malice there, was there? No, I don't think there was any malice. I think it was just the quality of touch by Boborski that took him away from Paul Richie. Remember, the Czech Republic took the lead via a free kick at Celtic Park when they won 2-1. They have a free kick here. Berger whips it in. Lock fence! And it's headed straight down at Neil Sullivan. And he's had two very good chances now. That's a marvellous free kick here by Berger. And Lock fence uses his height, but doesn't really direct uh, either side of Sullivan. Made it a reasonably comfortable save. Borski, Berger, Borski, Schmitzer, Craig Brown, the Scotland manager, has already conceded that the Czech Republic will win this group. It's only a question of when. Berger, Calderwood's challenge is a legal one. That is an illegal one. The Czechs are absolutely furious. They thought they should have had a free kick just before Dodds was walloped to the turf. And Josef Hovenets sees his game plan for the moment halted. 
Berger, Hasek, Schmitzer, Sukapadek, Horniak all back in that defensive wall. It looks like Callum Davidson's going to wallop this one towards goal, or it might be Lambert. It's Davidson. Boyd wins it back. And drives over a great cross. Headed out by Thomas Repka. So, chance for Scotland to apply a little bit more pressure now. Callum Davidson to take the corner kick. David Weir is up, posted around about the penalty spot. In fact, it's Richie who's there. Richie's in there. Richie scored! Scotland have the lead. And Paul Ritchie, with a dramatic header, sends the Tartan army absolutely wild. Well, what a fantastic moment for Paul Ritchie. He had an opportunity early on in the game, then he fluffed it. But on this occasion, he gets in front of his man, attacks the ball, puts it in the top corner, and there's no way Sterling Chick could get near that. There's Davidson's cross coming in. Paul is up tremendously high and puts it right in the top corner what a great goal oh they're going to have a party not a trace of emotion on the face of great ground there's a long long way to go what we really need to, to do now uh, Gary is just to retain possession just to get a bit of composure for the next three or four or five minutes and then we'll have a game in our hands because it'll be one thing chasing the game. Now we have Czechoslovakia, the Czech Republic, I should say. They've got to chase the game now. And oh. the tactics will change. Berger. Urged on by the home fans. Lock fence. That's a free kick. And the uh, Czech defenders claiming Lock Vence from the referee there. Well, this could be the Czech Republic's chance to reply. Berger and Nedved, the two players who will scheme away, ready to hit this free kick. On the last occasion, when they had a free kick, Czech, Scotland put someone on the line. It's interesting to see if they do it this time. No, Sullivan saying forward. I think it's going to be Berger. It's his side. Berger. Nedviet. What a save. An extraordinary reaction save by Neil Sullivan. Great save by Neil Sullivan. James D. Street got himself across there because he couldn't have seen the ball till the last moment. Here's the initial shot, which is blocked by him. And it comes to Yet, yeah, he gets his angles, gets his shot in, but it's a great tip. Corner to the Czech Republic, and a header by Schmitzer, held by Neil Sullivan. And boy, oh boy, have we got a night in Prague. Now, this is important moments here. Scotland can just, as I say, regain their composure, just kill the game, get the pass and go, keep possession of the ball, just take this thing out of it, just for two or three minutes. Remember... And their last but one international, Scotland beat Germany in Bremen. Then the disappointment of Saturday against the Faroe Islands. But here they come again, leading by a goal to nil. Davidson! Straight at Pavel Cernicek, and Scotland have had more shots on goal, Joe, in the opening 32 minutes of this match than they managed in 90 in Torshavn on Saturday. Yes, I, I, well, I think you've got to look at the circumstances. You, you have the farewells who sat back there and played in the last third of the field. They made it very difficult for any team that goes to the Fair Islands. Here tonight, we have a team that wants to come and win the game. There we have a very worried man here. Over there, sir, and I, I can, you've got to understand that Scotland really have more areas to play in tonight, and they've made you saw of it. The general build-up play has been marvellous, and they've had shots and headers on target. Foul on Pavel Nedviev, who hasn't been allowed to play. And Callum Davidson is shown a yellow card, and he'll miss 
Scotland's next international. It's uncertain when that will be. It will be against Bosnia, but whether it's home and away is yet to be sorted out. He's out for the next match. Free kick for the Czech Republic. Berger to take it. Oh, it's a disappointing one. And the player who often galvanises this Czech Republic team just hasn't managed to do so so far. Confirmation, Davidson yellow carded and is suspended for the next game. What must Craig Brown be thinking? Took all the flack from the Scottish press after Saturday. I sat through a very stormy press conference yesterday at the team hotel as Craig Brown defended his record as an international manager. He described Josef Hovenetz's side as the best in Europe, and incredibly, Scotland are leading. Dodds cleverly wins a throw in. Retka claiming he was having his jersey tucked from his frame. Durant. Boyd, another dangerous ball in towards Davidson. We'll have to watch his step, remember. The last thing Scotland need now is another dismissal like Matt Elliott's on Saturday. I think that should be a corner. I thought Poborski got the final touch. Maybe I need stronger glasses. Well, it's nice to see Callum Davidson taking Poborski up into his own area of the field there, nice to get forward, take some pressure off the defence as well. Durant, who's had a very steady game in midfield for Scotland. Just one change to personnel, Joe, but this looks a completely different team from Saturday, doesn't it? Yes, it is, but it's also different circumstances, the way that the, the opposition have actually approached the game. Tonight we have a game, Gary. singing you can hear is not coming from the Czech Republic fans we're sitting right in the middle of them and there's some very glum faces about us Lock Vents Pavel Nedviet Schmitzer Schmitzer changes direction ball through to Lock Vance just over here to Neil Sullivan who's been called into the action to make a fine save to deny Pavel Nedviev having a fine game for Scotland Poborski with the header intercepted by Durant Calderwood we are Kabarek Ned Vied Kaborski Czech Republic needs some inspiration now but they're coming up against plenty of perspiration from the Scottish team Schmitzer and they're just becoming a bit edgy and nervous now all that fluid football that we've seen from them in their previous matches has dried up well, I think Scotland defensively, to begin with, have been very composed. And there's only been one or two moments. The, the ball that Berger played across the face of the goal. But really, they've handled it quite easily. And I think in, in the centre of the field, Durant and Lampard have settled down and really have had the better. Well, I would like to see, if we could just add, I would like to see Alan Johnson getting into the game and for that to happen we've got to get the ball out to him he started well and he's just drifted out I think if we can get the ball out to him we can take the pressure off the Scottish defence Schmitzer Berger he'll need support here trying to turn Calderwood this way and that Kowalski 
Hasek, Pogorski, Calderwood. And the home fans are peeling for handball, but none of the Czech players did, which is always a good sign. Gallica. Foul by Thomas Retka, one of the hardest players in European football. Plays with Fiorentina in Serie A. He missed the game at Celtic Park through suspension. Remember the Czech Republic beat Scotland that night by two goals to one. Dodds. Ellen Davidson. Scotland do have a fantastic record of qualifiers under Craig Brown. They've lost only three. Could this be a glorious night for Scotland and the Tartan Army in Prague? Incidentally, Scotland's last three goals now have not been scored by their strikers. Craig Brown was pains to point out yesterday. It's a lovely ball laid in towards Dodds. Goal kick. That was unfortunate. I mean, not only was that a good ball, but it was a lovely run for everyone, Billy Dodds to be. He's just getting him out there behind the defence. Oh, flower of Scotland being sung now by the Tartan Army. Let's head with a free kick. This is Berger. The hero of the hour, Paul Ritchie, only his second international appearance, and his headed goal separates the two teams. Remember, he wouldn't have been playing tonight had Matt Elliott not foolishly got himself sent off on Saturday in the Faroe Islands. What a chance for him, and he's taken it with two hands and his head. It'll be Pavel Nedviet with the run-up of a pace bowler to smack this free kick violently towards Neil Sullivan's goal. That two-man defensive wall stood firm. They do call Pavel Nedved the Czech cannon. And it must have been staring down the... looking down a cannon as he prepared to take that free kick. This is David Weir. Scotland have qualified for the finals of the last two European Championships. I should say last two major championships. There's a yellow card here for Hinksukapadek, and he'll be suspended for the Czech Republic's next game. Free kick to Scotland, Weir, we almost got there. Terrific leap by David Weir. Some results in from this group already and great news for Scotland because Estonia have lost at home to Lithuania by two goals to one. Estonia won, Lithuania two is a final result. And the latest score from the Faroe Islands. Faroe Islands two, Bosnia one, a later score. Those are surprising score lines and so is this one. Nedviet. Any clear by David Weir.
So if Scotland could hang on to this one goal advantage for the duration, what a night it would be. Their European Championship hopes would be very much alive and kicking. Retka. Nedviet. Tucked in towards Poborski. Callum Davidson got just enough on the clearance to take it out of harm's way. Can Scotland hang on now till half time? It would be a marvellous achievement just to get to the 45 minute mark against arguably the best team in Europe at the moment. Berger. Play to the back post. Hornyak is there. It's a goal kick to Scotland. Well, they're appro <coughs> approaching the end of the first half, winning 1-0, and they, they thoroughly deserve to be in the lead. They've played the better football and have had the better chances. It's almost a year to the day since Scotland kicked off the World Cup in the Stade de France against Brazil. Nobody gave them a chance that day. And my goodness, they came close against Brazil. Nobody has given them a chance in this game. And yet they lead. One minute of stoppage time yet to be played. Radka. Lock Vence. Berger. Boborski. Dodds came back to nick the ball, but he's given it back to the Czech Republic and Yuri Niemets. Oh, and here's Berger. That's a legitimate challenge. Durant's giving it away. Niemets again. Only a matter of seconds left now in this first half. Sukhobarek, Horniak, Poborski. Horniak to his right. It's Horniak's cross. Lock fence. And it'll be Sullivan's ball. And that could be the last chance for the Czech Republic to find an equaliser before the half-time whistle. Indeed, the referee, Helmut Krug, takes the teams towards the dressing room. And what a 45 minutes for Scotland. Paul Ritchie has given Scotland the lead with a towering header, his first international goal. And at the other end, Neil Sullivan has made a marvellous save to deny Pavel Nedviev. It's all smiles from the Tartan Army at half-time in Prague. At the break, it's the Czech Republic nil, Scotland won. Craig, that was a vast improvement on Saturday. What's made the difference? Well, obviously the environment's made a difference. The players are very anxious to do extreme, extremely well. They've done exceptionally well in the first half. We got the goal, which was all important, and we mean to be very positive in the second half. We don't intend to hold back and try to defend the one nothing. We're trying to score again. That is easier said than done, but we'll be very positive. I hope you see that. Paul Ritchie's made quite an impact, hasn't he? Yeah, Paul Ritchie, excellent. He deserved the goal. He's played exceptionally well for his second international appearance. We're delighted with Paul. Did you expect the game to be so open? Yes, I expected the game to be open. The Czechs play an open game and they, they have been very, very fair about it. They're trying to play football, but so are we. And I think we can get another goal in this game if we've got a break in front of it. Craig, thanks very much. Thank you. Craig Brown talking to Lee Wellings. In fact, Paul Rich's goal was only the second the Czech Republic have conceded here in Prague in their European Championship campaign. In fact, you have to go back to 1977 to find Scotland's last win against the old Czechoslovakia national team and the man who scored that day is sitting alongside me Joe Jordan. Joe what do you think Scotland's prospects are in the second half? Well I think if they continue the way that they, uh, they played the 45 minutes they've certainly got a great chance. There's a chance there for Calderwood and the shot was initially blocked and here come the Czech Republic on the counter attack. Lambert intelligently playing the ball back towards Neil Sullivan the Wimbledon goalkeeper been linked in uh, recent weeks with a move
for Scottish football with Celtic. We shall see. Tukaparic. Up towards Lock Vance, who's been largely disappointing so far. I think the coach, Owen S, will, will maybe make a little change here if he doesn't uh, improve on his first 45 minutes. He had one or two chances with his head, half chances, but he didn't make much of it. And really, generally speaking, I think that pensive-looking gentleman there, I'm sure he's thinking about making changes if nothing happens in the next 10 or 15 minutes. The Czech Republic have a six foot eight inch striker on their substitutes bench called Collar. He'll change the colour in one or two Scottish places should he come on. Here's Berger. Tackled by David Weir. David Weir of Everton. Who played Schmitzer onside for the Czech second goal at Celtic Park when these two sides met. This is Sukaparek, this is Ratka. Rushes off Gallagher. Repke again. Dodds. Hashek. Turn back to Pavel Sunicek, who had a string of important saves to make in that first half. Sometimes criticised for not being decisive enough at dead ball situations. Lockvence couldn't get there. Lockvence! And thrashes the ball into the crowd. Hasn't scored a lot of goals at international level, just one. And this is his 21st appearance. But that's not his stock in trade. Winning the ball, chesting it down and bringing others into the game is what he's best at. One or two Czech fans look none too happy with Mr. Lockvens. Schmitzer, Berger. A clever idea by Tom Boyd. And it's Yiri Niemec to take this throw in now for the Czech Republic. Berger. Yemets, Lock Vance, and cleared by Boyd. Yemets, probably here, 100 drummers have been hired for this game to try and whip up the locals. Schmitzer, away by Calderwood. This is Johnston. Hasek. Kowalski. Kowalski. Throw into the Czech Republic. They've seen a lot of the ball in the opening few minutes of the second half. Repka. Sukaparek. Lok Vence. Schmitzer. Gasp of anticipation in the crowd, but Schmitzer's shot wasn't hard enough or angled wide enough of Neil Sullivan to cause a problem. Durant. Scotland can ill afford to be that defensive this early on in the second half, Joe. Well, I think you've got to give a, a little bit of credit to the Czech Republic. I think they will have had a little bit of a, a hard word from them. Their coach, they've come out, they've really got to play better than they did in the first 45 minutes. But the question is, I, can Scotland continue the way they did? I think if Scotland can continue the way they, they, they approached the first 45 minutes, I think it'll be very difficult for the Czech Republic to go back in the game. And I think it's worth mentioning that the crowd are going to become more and more impatient if the Czech Republic don't manage to find a goal. Yeah, I think they came expecting uh, the Czech Republic to win 2 or 3 nothing. It's not happened. I think Scotland... Scotland have really um, come into this game after the weekend's result and performance. And there's an opening here for Johnston, but the whistle has gone. The referee spotted something I didn't, to be honest. And he's awarded a free kick to the Czech Republic. Yeah, it just, I was just saying there, the approach of Scotland after what we've all got to agree was a poor performance. 
against the Ferrers. I think that they've really reacted in a positive way. They played well, but I think the determination against a lot of decisions like that one that has gone against them has been first class. Now this is in Pavel Nedved country. And it's Nedved already standing over the ball. Tom Boyd looks a little bit worried. Nedved can whip these in with terrific pace and terrific accuracy. And Neil Sullivan better beware. Buzz of expectation now goes round the ground. It's Nedved. The wall stood firm. It's Nedved again. It's Lot Vance. It's a goal kick. Well, not for the first time. The, the Scottish wall has done its job. They are dangerous from free kicks. There's two areas where I, I see the, the Czech Republic being a danger. Free kicks. And when, in a few occasions, the first half they managed to catch Scotland on the break. Normally, Scotland have it a settled uh, shape at the back. But once or twice, when they have broke forward and been caught, they have looked a little bit vulnerable. But that has been few and far between. Let's hope it stays that way. Horniak, Nedviet. Nedviet again, trying to pick out Pobolski. Callum Davidson gets back. Oh dear, that's a nasty challenge by Pobolski on Paul Ritchie. And quite rightly, Pobolski is shown a yellow card. That's his first of the competition, so he won't miss the Czech's next game on the 4th of September away to Lithuania. He had never had a chance of getting to that ball, did he? Well, I think that Paul, Paul Ritchie did exceptionally well. He read the situation. It was a straightforward run to begin with between Callum Davidson and Proboski, but Paul got there in plenty of time, really, and he thoroughly deserved a brookie. Here it is again. I mean, Paul's just out of the picture here, but he does get there in plenty of time. I mean, Callum Davidson, I think, has read the script. He sees that Paul's going to get there. Paul has the ball. He's rode the tackle, but the intent was there. Paborski got there as quick as he could. Durant is giving it away to Berger. Nedviet, Lokvens, Schmitz are ahead of him. Berger to his right. Hashek now. And all those passes which in recent games have been played to perfection by the Czech Republic, just slightly off key tonight. Well, God, I think that goes down to the way that Scotland are at the back. They look nice and compact. Now, Paul Ritchie has come in. There of that worried coach again. Over Nets. But just get back to the Scotland defence there. They look, you know, to be to be sound, comfortable and composed at the back. And they're not getting stretched in any way. Let's hope it stays that way, Joe. You said that just before the Faroe Islands <laughs> equalised on Saturday. Yes, I did. Uh, I spoke a little bit too early. I thought... I'm going back to that main event. Scotland didn't play particularly well, but I thought they did deserve to collect the three points. But they were caught with a, with a sucker punch. Well, that's history now, isn't it? And Craig Brown wants to consign that draw to history as he chases an improbable victory here in Prague. Calderwood, Johnston, all still in play. Sukaparek. Schmitzer, Ritchie got his head to the ball, so did Berger. Davidson. Lambert. There really is a unity about Scotland as they try to defend this lead, which is very admirable indeed. Ratka. Lockvance. Schmitzer. Play to the back post. Nedviet. And what a great defensive header there by Paul Lambert. Just whipping the ball away from Pavel Nedviet, who'd drawn his boot back as if to shoot. Yes, I think Paul had read it there. He knew where his man was. Berger with the corner. Sullivan hasn't got there. Just about cleared by Scotland. A goal-line clearance, I think it might have been Lambert who got it clear. 
What a let off there for Scotland. I think Lambert just about got the ball off his own goal line with Sullivan stretching. Retka. Oh, that was close. That was a terrific uh, corner kick <coughs> for Lambert. If it was the man in the, in the Scotland goal line, he did his job. Here is Berger, brings it in, whips it in with pace. What yes, a clearance. Tremendous. And there we have Lofgren trying to get down and get himself a penalty kick. Delica. There's a lot of support out there, surrounded by red shirts. You just have to look into the eyes of some of these Czech Republic players to know that they are failing to deliver the goods. Remember, this is meant to be party time for the Czech Republic. Lock vents. We've just got enough of his body onto the ball to direct it back towards Neil Sullivan. This could go down as one of the great nights in the history of Scottish football. And the Tartan Army in fine voice behind the goal defended by Pavel Cernicek. charge of his 52nd game tonight. Weir, Johnston, Hashek, Yemets. A support here from Horniak. He has Lock Vents to aim at. This is Kaborski. Oh, that's a very disappointing cross. And the Czech Republic are making quite a few unforced errors now. That will suit Neil Sullivan right down to the ground. He won't mind playing at ball boy all night. Well, Poborski for one, he's had so far as he's had a poor game. But the Scotland team are asking uh, the Czechs some questions now. You know, you're looking at the start of the second half for, for a reaction. What it puts Scotland under pressure has it's failed to happen. And that really has got to do with the work rate as well that Scotland have put in. Right from the front two guys who have not much to be to have going forward, but certainly they've worked their salts off to gain possession once it's been lost. Scotland have a free kick. Horniak. Durant. Scotland are giving away a free kick. This is Patrick Berger. Schmitzer. Again, delivered out of harm's way by David Weir. Niemetz with a throw. Repka. First whispers of Czechy Czechy from the home fans. It was a Familiar cry at the Euro 96 finals. Horniak under pressure here from Dots. Remember, Czech Republic runners up in Euro 96, beaten by Germany. Wembley Stadium, Oliver Bierhoff scoring a golden goal. Hasek. might be coming off shortly. I just had a whisper in my ear. And here comes a substitution. Hashek is being substituted. And it's Baranek, number 18, who plays his club football here with Sparta Prague, who's more of a winger, is on in place of Hashek. Durant. Oh dear. Well, it was worth a shot on goal from there. That suggests to me, Joe, that they want to be a little bit more adventurous and perhaps try and put Scotland under pressure. Yeah, I think so. I, I think 
the coach Hovenets will be disappointed the way his team has started the second half they haven't made any difference whatsoever to put in pressure on Skoll and they have really controlled it absolutely crazy Schmitz has received a yellow card for kicking the ball into the crowd and he better watch his P's and Q's or his Z's and Q's of the Czech Republic otherwise he'll be in even warmer water with a German official Scotland effectively playing for second place in Group 9 along with Bosnia and Estonia. Estonia have already lost today. This is Callum Davidson. Away from Retka. Dogs waiting in the middle. A win tonight for Scotland. Could see them amongst the leading contenders to win automatic qualification to Euro 2000 as the best second place team. Second goal would do nicely now. And there is a second goal. Johnston scores. And Scotland could be celebrating victory in Prague. They can't believe it. They just can't take in what is happening in front of them. Alan Johnston, who scored on Saturday in the Faroe Islands, now gives Scotland a two-goal advantage. Well, it was great, a great run by Alan Johnson. He's, he's come across from his first there on the right wing. Again, he's gone in front of his striker and got a beautiful header and deflected into the, in the near post. And Cernicek has been beaten there and put Scott in a 2 0 lead and no more than they deserve. 28 to 1, Ladbrooks were offering for Scotland to win this match by two goals to nil and when I mentioned it in the taxi to you Joe on the way over you snorted and said it can't be done no I didn't think they went two enough and I thought it's maybe by the odd goal <laughs> oh there's plenty of smiles now I think we'll be going out in the time town tonight Joe and plenty more will be going out as well wending their way across the river into the old city to perhaps partake of a beer or two should Scotland win. Well, they certainly have a foundation. Uh, we don't want to be going to our chickens early doors, but at this moment in time, 2 nothing up. And also the way they're playing, I, I think you've got to look at their middle of the game with confidence. Burger with a free kick. The Czechs desperate for a goal now. Hornyak. And the referee initially said goal kick, and I think he's changed his mind now. And Tom Boy got a bit of a whack in the jaw. Double substitution about to happen. Collar, six foot eight inches tall, number 15, about to come on. Kuka also about to come on. And there's a goal for the Czech Republic. They're right back in it. Repka scores. It's his first international goal. And Scotland have been hit with a sucker punch. Well, corner whipped in here by Nedvia. Yes, yeah, played to the near post there. And Repka, I don't, I don't see someone on the far post, but Repka there, he's got in front of everyone and put it from that angle right in at the back. It's amazing how vulnerable a team can be once they score a goal. And there is evidence there that you've always got to be cautious. You've always got to have your discipline about you. And remember, Scotland conceded a goal from a corner kick in the Faroe Islands on Saturday, and they've done it again. And suddenly, the Czech Republic are playing with the wins at their back. Paborski! <laughs> Lock Vence was waiting unmarked inside the six-yard box. And look at his disappointment that he couldn't pick out Lock Vence, because that's where the intended ball was heading. And around us... The Czech fans are on their feet now. Corner taken by Berger. Cleared by Davids. Back to Njenec. Pavel Nedviev. Veronek. 
Horniak with a fresh air shot. Well, Scotland has scored twice, who's to say they couldn't score again? Horniak. The Czechs have put on ice their plans to make a double substitution because a player here in possession, Thomas Ratke, has pulled a goal back. Schmitzer. Schmitzer, it's a lovely ball, Lock Vence, and Sullivan with a fine save. First shot Lock Vence has had on target. Well, actually, Lock Vence did very well there. I mean, he took the ball, he's back to the goals, and the ball, as it comes in here, gets to Lock Vence. And Sullivan does well because that ball comes through Paul Ritchie's legs. It's a good save. And Scotland now facing the fire of the Czech Republic. Six games, six wins. Their tail had been massively tweaked by Scotland, who had the cheek to go two up here in Prague. Retka's goal has halved Scotland's lead, and this is Schmitzer. Faborski. Lockbens waits for the cross. Baranek is in there as well. Corner. Retkes forward again. Oh, Scotland, beware. They've already conceded one goal from a corner kick. Retkes forward. It's over Retkes' head. Lock Benz. Nedviet. Straight at Neil Sullivan. The Czech cannon firing blanks at the moment. There's a great opportunity there for Nedviet to have the shot. Here's the, the corner coming across from Berga. It comes out there, 18 yard line. And Sullivan, not for the first time, the position has been excellent. Suddenly, the fans are behind their side. The home fans, I should uh, certainly stress. Foul on Lock Vance by Paul Ritchie. No, we don't really want to be given too many free kicks away. Lock Vance is coming off. Collar will be his natural replacement. Pavel Kuka, number 17, about to come on. Two strikers. Lock Vance departs the scene. Paborski departs the scene. And a giant in every sense of the word now, six foot eight inches tall, is on. He dwarfs some of the Scottish players. Berger with a free kick. Niemetz. Collar, who scored on Saturday. Away by Weir. Repka. Nedviev. Can Scotland just weather the storm for the next ten minutes or so? And this is Retka. Enormous ball played up towards Collar, who missed it. This is Collar! Who got the final touch? Collar's nickname is Dino, as in Dinosaur, not Dino, as in Dino Baggio. Another corner to the Czech Republic. Nedviet whips it in. And any clear by Davidson. This is such a testing time for Scotland. Their defence being put under tremendous pressure. That'll be a goal kick. The chance for some of those defenders to take a bit of a breather. He's a monster, isn't he? Well, you look at him, the shape he is, the size. I think someone like Paul, I think he's got to be utilised and a little bit of Route 1 football, and I'm sure from set pieces, they'll be putting that ball in. Jess coming on now for Scotland. Durant coming off. I think his experience, Durant, tonight has been invaluable. Jess here scored Scotland's only goal against the Czech Republic as they lost 2-1 at Celtic Park. Now back at Aberdeen, where he started his career. Chelsea, the 
Coca-Cola. We are. Nemitz just stole the ball away from Jess. And it's Boyd. Retka. Stop there ahead of Gallica. Davidson. Free kick for the foul on Schmitzer. Those Scottish jerseys stained with sweat. And they've got plenty more hard work to do before they can celebrate. A long, long way to go. Kuka was fouled by Paul Ritchie, who scored the game's opening goal. His first international goal. And the noise levels rise again inside this Sparta Prague Stadium. Berger with a free kick. Sullivan hasn't got there. And the reason he hadn't got there is because he was being fouled. He's only actually featured in one game for Scotland where he hasn't conceded a goal. That was the win in Germany. He's had a hard day at the office. Nedviet. Johnston trying to get back to deny Berger. What a good piece of defensive work there by Alan Johnston. Effective at both ends of the field. And Berger now guilty of tripping Kevin Gallagher. Remember, Patrick Berger scored the opening goal in the European Championship final. Plenty to smile about. No wonder Scotland still with their noses in front. Smelly vision. Looking at those feet. Collar. Oh, he's made a decent turn. He has Kukra ahead of him. Schmitzer. And it's Sullivan's ball. Cognac with a header, Niemetz. Collar, another clever turn. Richie has committed the foul. Richie's shown a yellow card. He follows Callum Davidson into the referee's notebook. Once he sets off towards goal, it's not easy to stop, is he? No, what, what he has shown for such a big guy, he's, he's showed some good foot, uh, footwork, you know, he's, he's turned the Scotland defence on two occasions now, and he's been, he's been getting away from him, so when he picks up pace, he is a big, powerful guy. This will be Ned Beard, I suspect, to drive in this free kick. Scotland have 11 players behind the wall, Ned Vied. For about 20 minutes yesterday, Ned Vied and Berger just practiced those free kicks. And it was surprising how many of those were on target. It's such a fierce competitive match, it's a bit... Yes, but I think you've got to give credit to the Scotland wall. Throughout the game, they've, lined, they've been lined up by Sullivan and it's, it's done its job. Nedviev, Kuka, as the equaliser, Pavel Kuka makes it 2-2, and the Czech Republic are back from the dead. Sullivan came off his line, and then he stopped. Kuka's made a marvellous run there into the channel run there cross shot with speed Sullivan yeah it's a great finish Gary dead yeah just put that ball there but it's the run that gets him away it's played down the side uh, at an angle but not not enough to deny him that opportunity to slide it into the net and he's cross shot it's a very different game of football now Seems an awful long time since Alan Johnston headed Scotland into a two-goal lead.
Now, what's the referee going to do here? It's Schmitzer, who's been flawed, and it's Dodds who's shown a yellow card. Third Scottish player to be cautioned. Well, you can probably hear now the Czech fans right behind their team. Remember, another goal, and the Czechs will have qualified because Bosnia, the last we heard, were trailing by two goals to one to the Faroe Islands. And that, this is Berger. And Nedviet, Berger, incidentally, final score from the Faroe Islands. I'm just getting it, Faroe Islands two, Bosnia two. So Bosnia have failed to win there. And it still counts if the Czech Republic score again. They go to the Euro 2000 European Championships. Reminder, final score, Estonia 1, Lithuania 2. Still a bad result for Craig Brown's team. Can Scotland just grab another goal? They've worked so hard. It really would be a shame if it ended level after all the hard work they've put in. But remember, they are playing arguably the best team in European football at the moment. But I mean, the majority of the game, Scotland, in my opinion, have been the better team. But immediately after they scored the second goal, we did get a reaction from the Czechs. They did get a goal from them. They've lifted their game. Remember the excitement of Euro 96, and they're ready to party down in Holland and Belgium next summer. Madanek puts it all out. Hollywood with a threat. Huge kick by Sunichek. Sukapare. Scotland who had such a marvellous start to this game. Richie's header and then Johnston making it 2-0. Really are up against it. This is Ned Viet. Old firm boys. And they did. Terrific challenge there by Lambert. Scotland have to defend. And defend effectively. Remember, they conceded the first goal from a corner. Nedviet. Nedviet again picks out Berger. Another corner kick. They really have played well, haven't they, Joe? They have Scotland. played well. As I say, Scotland, for the majority of the game, have been the better team. But giving credit to the Czech Republic, they went through nothing down, immediate reply they got the goal and they've lifted their game now Scotland have got to endure this little bit of pressure Berger with a corner Repka almost got that flick on again Schmitzer and that'll be goal kick thankfully Neil Sullivan he stood little chance with Repka's goal, it's a little chance with a goal from Kuka. No, I don't think you, know, you could blame either goalkeeper tonight, Gary, for the goals. They've been executed with precision. Johnston's after goals. this one. Sukaparek got in the way.
worry etched on his face at the moment. Ten minutes to go, ten minutes for Scotland to hang on. He's a relieved man. Josef Hovinitz, the coach of the Czech Republic. Kuk is away here. Kuka going to turn Ritchie, may need support. Collar's arriving, fantastic challenge by Tom Boyd. Davidson. relief on some of those Czech players faces is very obvious when there were two down they looked absolutely petrified I think especially if you're two nothing down and you're at home there's oh. an extra pressure on you as the stadium typifies Davidson with a free kick and it cleared by Retka Spitzer Kuka that's a great challenge by Ritchie. He was drafted into the team in very difficult circumstances for Ritchie. Hovinets screams instructions to his team. waits patiently for the ball remember after the final whistle from Prague you'll be able to see highlights of the Bulgaria England game which was played earlier today Collar waits just outside the six yard box and marked by David Weir Collar flicks it on and it's a goal kick I don't know why they didn't start with this uh, player Joe he seems a lot he seems to be able to offer a lot more than Lockvins. Well he has in the short period of time that he's born, but so is also is uh, uh, Kuka. He is a player whose track record is first class. He is a goal scorer. Handball by Lambert. Free kick to the Czech Republic. Niemitz, the captain. Pavel Nebjed of Lazio. Beranek. Beranek again. Kohler waits on the back post. Great header by Kohlerwood. Beranek again for the Czech Republic. Goal kick. Well, Patrick Berger and his teammates know they've really been in a game tonight. Arguably their toughest game of the qualifying stage so far. There's Jonathan Gould. Here is the camera. This is the Scottish goalkeeper. He can be very proud of his team tonight. Gallagher. Johnston. Just wonder whether there's one last opportunity perhaps for Scotland just to nick a famous victory. My goodness, they've deserved it. Berger, Niemetz, Horniak. Referee allowed the advantage there, and there wasn't too much advantage which accrued to the Czech Republic. That was a good decision by the referee in the favour of the Czech Republic. It's just at the cross it came in, lacked the quality. It allowed the game to flow. And the Czechs now have their free kick. Nebjeb, up towards Kola. Strike 
to me he makes a dramatic impact when he comes on but his effectiveness seems to wane after maybe 20 minutes or so maybe so i mean he is a good alternative but i don't think it'll be a game that the chase will be used to going route one i think they are a, a team that have been bred over the years to play football pass and move but they have the opportunity now they have this this option especially from free kicks four minutes remaining as Hovenets inside squeeze the accelerator once again Berger it's a goal for the big man Collar and he could well have taken the Czech Republic all the way to Euro 2000 oh dear heartbreak for Scotland They can hardly contain their excitement. Sullivan's beaten once again. And to a man, every Czech fan is on his or her feet. Well, Berger puts this ball in, but I've got to look at the mark. And there he is. I mean, he's the biggest man in the park. And he gets a free header. Here we are. Berger approaches it. Whips it in. And there he is. Berger puts it in the corner. But you've got to look at the mark and I mean the early doors about the four goals that had been scored I thought the quality finishes but I think you've got to look at that and be critical of the Scotland defence Berger Boyd come on Scotland another goal please Nedviev be a free kick Ned Vied exchanges angry words with Tom Boyd oh how hugely disappointing Joe well disappointing the man in which the the third goal has been scored Gary a scholar's performance has been excellent but you can't concede goals in that manner Craig Brown Berger Scotland have never come back to win after conceding two goals since Craig Brown took over the national team so they're going to have to go against the tide of history if Scotland are going to get anything from this match we're inside the final minutes of the 90 it's a time for one last Scottish attack Berger. Lifted on towards Davidson, but headed away by Schmitzer. Scotland have to press players forward now. Calderwood is forward. Gallagher two. This is Gallagher. Boyd. Certainly, Jake almost went the wrong way. Redka and Dodds exchange sour words. Joe, as we approach full time, your thoughts on this extraordinary game? Well, it has been extraordinary, extraordinarily disappointing. Uh, in a manner that Scotland played the majority of the game, they played it as, as winners, really. They took a 2 nothing lead. And you've got to hand it to the chest. They came back, equalised with two marvellous goals. But I think the third goal, Craig Brown and his staff will look at it, along with the players. 
and really be shaking their heads because it is a goal that should never have happened. And really, for all the foot in and come away with nothing, it's a really bit of a tragedy. Sukaparek. Ratka hammers the ball forward. Sullivan launches the ball downfield, heading clear by Ratka. It's a time for a Scottish attack. Jess. Well, they've got a free kick. Everybody forward. This could be Scotland's last chance. Calderwood positions himself on the back post. We've played a minute of stoppage time. And that is going to trouble nobody. Oh dear. Scotland staring defeat full in the face. But it looks like another famous glorious defeat for Scotland the Czech Republic are going to the European Championship finals they're the first team to qualify here's the man who scored the winning goal all six foot eight of him Kola Sullivan let in three goals after Scotland had taken a commanding two-goal advantage through Ritchie and Johnston. Poor old Craig Brown. He must have dreamed about a famous win here. And it's party time in Prague. Scotland, who worked so hard to claim a victory, have just one point to show for their two matches against the Faroe Islands and the Czech Republic. They've lost twice now in their European Championship qualifiers, both times to the Czechs. Craig Brown disappointed. Final score, Czech Republic 3, Scotland 2.